this very moment in time, there's probably thousands of gangsters who are looking for a way out. And there yeah. isn't a way out. Yeah, Welcome, yeah. Uh, Elton. It's great to have you. Hi, Clarence. Hi, it's a privilege being on Cape Talk. <laughs> is, is, it, is it about choices, like I've summed it up? And we're talking about show maxes, spinners. Is it about choices? Yeah, I, I, I think uh, uh, on a human factor, it could be about choices, but uh, not of, uh, a lot of them don't really have those choices. Some of them uh, just get grow, uh, born into it, and uh, that's pretty much what their lives are all about. And then they just get stuck in this thing, and yeah. it becomes part of the identity. And so uh, once they claim the identity, then it's like it's uh, pretty much it's done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You you play the role of of Damien, a, a gentle gangster. <laughs> uh, I've never encountered well gang leader. Yeah, yeah. I've encountered some gentle gangsters with a conscience. It was a shock for uh, me too. But I don't count the gang leaders with a conscience. They are psychopaths, <laughs> yes. sociopaths. Yes, yeah, supposed how, to be. How, how, how can you be both? Uh, no, I think uh, the storyline was really interesting because why well, it's a gangster. Uh, a leader of, of, of a gang who had um, a fatal condition. He had an illness, so there was uh, things that he needed to yeah. put in place to uh, make the um, to make his uh, ending, make it uh, properly, uh, get some stuff uh, in line for his family, get some stuff in line for himself, and uh, just dealing with some business before he leaves Earth. Yeah. And so um, I think it's also uh, a nice... Uh, uh, that angle of, of, of calm is also a sense as the actor um, that I had to um, bring to the fore. It was also that sense of danger that the, the calm brings that danger to the front. And uh, I was trying to portray that. Yeah. The, the less he talks, the more intimidating mm. it could be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't want us to give away too much as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, I want people to go and check, but I know it's so difficult not to give away so much. Yeah. So, so normally a gang lead uh, does not confront their mortality with time in hand yeah. to reconcile uh, you know, their demons yeah. normally it's a bullet and it's quite kind of quick yeah. um, it was about confronting mortality and understanding just this mm. life that you've lived yeah yes 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 this is this is also one of the things that i was trying to um uh explain to people we, we don't want to glamorize this uh gangsterism no. and but it but but it does uh it it does boil down to showing people a reality and this is the reality that uh, a lot of these people on the cape flats they live with that and uh, i was very intimidated coming from a small town in the Northern Cape having to play this big major gangster on Lavender Hill, you know, I really didn't see how did that fit in. So when when I did get the, the, the call, I was told I was going to play opposite Brandon Daniels and DJ Maton, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to be the small dog. And then everybody tells me on set, no, but you're going to be the big dog. They're going to be your hand langertjes, alles your bodyguards. I have not gemaakt that day. I know, I know work is scarce, but can you exercise discretion and say, no, nah, I'm not list for this thing, or yes, I want to do this thing? Oh, yeah, no, that's, a, that's a very good question, Clarence. Um, I wish we as actors could have that privilege to choose, but uh, we live in a third world. This is not Hollywood, and uh, everybody in the, in the first world, they graft it. They have to be creative. They have to produce things. So uh, I've, I've, ch I've, I've moved from theater which I've done for many years. I've moved from theater into small roles in TV work in Joburg that I stayed nine years. And then eventually it just started to grow. And uh, it, becomes, it becomes a bit of a benefit having to uh, cross both lines, having to do theater as well as TV sure. work. Yeah, And it's very difficult for an actor to just stick to one thing. There's, there's a lot of them that yeah. uh, make a success of theater. And there's a lot of them that make a success only from TV work. But uh, the majority of us, I think, simply because we come from this, uh, this world, uh, needs to be uh, able to traverse both. I'm chatting to actor Elton <laughs> Landrew. He's in the studio with me. Uh, it's about Show Max's Spinners. Uh, Spinners follows Ethan. He's a 17-year-old driver working for the local gang. He needs to support his younger brother, but increasingly uh, he's getting disgusted with gang life. Ethan mm -hmm. discovers a possible way out. So Ethan uh, is your driver. The yeah. gang boss's driver. Gang boss's driver. And the yes. driver sees some talent in him. Yeah, yeah. And the gangs, the, the gang boss also wants, wants him to leave this life. Yes, I think there's um, a, 
not wanting to give away too much. There's a history between them. And um, Ethan basically became, or, or Damien basically became uh, like a father figure for Ethan. And um, there's just a hint in the movie uh, that, that I'm giving away where, where Damien and Ethan's father has a history as well. Mm. So uh, Damien at the end of the day becomes a father figure, but yeah. purely out of, uh, out of uh, guilt. Uh, consciousness having to save this uh, boy that he knows that he failed his father for and so he's trying his best trying to uh, almost use this use this boy but also maybe having to uh, maybe being stuck in this in this world that he that he knows that he maybe wants to use this boy to get out but that's not his mission so um, yeah he sees his, Ethan the young man sees his pun spinning yeah, yeah, which is a growing subculture. So it's very, yes. very now this particular story. <laughs> yes, very much, very much. It was interesting. The 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 the, the um the movie makers uh from Showmax um they came over and they wanted to do a documentary on spinning and they went as deep as going to all the shows, meeting up with the people, Cape Town, everywhere in Cape Town they went to, and then they went to Atlantis, and eventually they started realizing that there's a subculture that they really want to expose it's more than just spinning it's about the cape town culture it's about the colored people and so they decided to make a series out of it and uh yeah there we have spinning <laughs> and, and how, how do you think the series spinners honors that identity that you're talking about um, I think it's a, I think it's a, a, a major platform putting the colored um, colored history and the colored uh, communities on the on the front line. I mean, uh, exposing the the, the 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 flats, exposing the Cape Town life, exposing the colored life, and the colored culture. And this uh, movie is really really delving into that exactly the kind of way that we want it to be because it's 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 showing people another kind of Cape Town. You yeah. know. Yeah, that, that, that not many gray people. world. <laughs> yes, you know. <laughs> people think it's black and white. It's gray. It's gray. <laughs> it's completely gray. Yeah. Uh, and we got a saying for that. It's it's a very difficult gray, and it's yeah. not easy to yeah. trap Suchi through it. It's difficult, but yeah. the script writing is is raw and real, and so too the locations. There's mm. an authenticity about it. Yes, yes, very much. We were given uh, uh, the range just to uh, alter the scripts as we went along. Every day when we come in, we used to discuss the script and the wording and ask the director, Jakob Bauer, you know, uh, what can we change here? Can we say this? And they gave us a lot of freedom right. to be able to do that. You, you don't really get that on many movies. Uh, but there did come a point, especially in the heated moments when the show was do, uh, done and we're getting to like the hijack scenes and the action scenes and all of that, where we were told that we have to decide how how many P words we're going to say today? How many N words? Your N, your P, you know? So they're going to have to dish nice it out. Person. Yes, you're a nice person. <laughs> they started dishing it out. Okay, today it's your day for P, and tomorrow <laughs> it's that guy's day for N. <laughs> Was it Malgarag? Yeah. I mean, how, yeah. how can you tell the story without that piece? No, how can you? <laughs> well, uh, message in Elton, and I got to share it with you. Elton is one of the most underrated actors, but he's one of the best actors in South Africa. Nobody plays a better gangster than him. Uh, I've been a fan since he played Llewellyn in Forgiveness. He's truly a legendary South African actor. Uh, they must please revive him on Aaron's Flay uh, <laughs> to make Bumpy Vitbeen. <laughs> uh, I don't understand some of that. So, what, what is that message? Exactly say who's Bumpy that you must make Vidbina. You must kill no. Bumpy clearly. <laughs> yeah. No, no, everybody talks everybody asks me when I'm going back to Aaron's play and so on. But um yeah, and, and having to go sort out these people because Jace the Groot Kop and Jace the Obert Alice can reach Kreda so as Ned David Valachan and so but uh, the contract is done, man. <laughs> you know. So once the contract is done, it's like you, you, you. That's that's you. You cutting change with that and hoping that maybe, maybe something else is gonna come up. And so uh, I was really, really uh, happy and really fortunate to be able to uh, be part of the spinners. You know. I think you know that message in. Uh, it's unsigned, so I don't know who it's from, but. Uh, I talks to you, and I think your history. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about Chelsea Thomas 
Uh, let's talk about Brendan Daniels. Let's talk about Cantona James. They're all yeah. absolutely superb in this form. Yeah. Um, they got great futures ahead of them as well. What, what was it yeah. like working with them? Oh, it was wonderful. Uh, I think the the young ones, the 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 Chelsea's and the and the Canton, and they they're not so young anymore. But I mean, they they the young generation, and they give such a nice energy to this to this movie. They bring this whole new generation of young enthusiastic people that wants to come and see spinners, and that also wants to look up to acting in this country. And uh, Canton is doing great. They they went uh, to Cannes film festival you know to go see um spinners and all of this and brandon daniels is just a whole body of work i mean brandon daniels is like one of the hardest working actors at the moment he's constantly busy and i think uh, I'm, I'm not saying that he's very lucky in that regard but brandon just has something special you know mm. that uh, he looks good on camera he talks good on camera javelin for ali gangster roles <laughs> ends the ends the shock when I heard that he was my bodyguard. <laughs> I think that there are so much beautiful stories, uh, and sometimes not beautiful, um, sometimes really ugly stories that come mm -hmm. uh, out, of, out of this Cape Town, um, and that there is, that this industry has legs. Our own stories have legs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think the future looks great for these young people. That what I'm, that's what I'm mm. saying from, from my vantage. Yeah. Do you in it? Do you yeah. immerse there? Yeah. How, how do you feel about that future? Um, personally, Clarence, it's been an, it's been a bit of a struggle. Uh, I've been in this game now for 24 years. And, um, yeah, you, the, the, the perks and the things that you, that you get exposed to, you know, comes from uh, good productions. You might be lucky to work with a David Kramer and a Tali Peterson on uh, Cat and the Kings back in the 19s, 1999. I started with them and they basically just showed me the world with Cat and the Kings. We traveled overseas and all of that. And then you have to come back and you have to find yourself as a starving actor. You start doing children's theater. You start doing protest theater. And then the game starts shifting. Now you're also getting older. So you have to consider all these things once you get a big gig and then you have to be ready to maybe be unemployed for three, four months. So you always feel like you're constantly starting with zero. It's, it's, it's financially, it's not really, really um, uh, easy, easy um, career to handle. But uh, you have to create stuff, you have to produce stuff, you have to... Um, I but think, we're doing that. I, we're doing that. We're yes. creating. We're producing. Yes, we are. Yes, yes. Is and the this funding is, still lacking? The funding uh. is probably lacking, and that's probably one of the things that they that they don't really push us when we when we into theater schools and when you're, you're in the college. Kind of creative side. There's the one thing that I feel that they must still push to tell people: you don't have to only be an actor. You can be a singer, a writer, a producer, a director. There's so much, you know, yeah. script uh, education, all of that stuff that you can. Maybe do even just uh, teach yourself how to play instruments, yeah. go into music, you know, yeah. So It's the artist entrepreneur, yes, the entrepreneurial definitely. part of it that absolutely. needs. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so I want to get back to spinners uh, and a hypothetical question. I don't want to ask too much, so, uh, but, but it's perceived as a, a representation of life on the Cape, Cape Flats, but also mm. a celebration. Y yeah. Yeah, yes, yes. I think it comes down to what we just spoke about. The more we can bring out these stories, the better. Yes. So, uh, that's the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And there's a lot of stuff that still need to be told, you know. Um, we, we as colored people are, are, are usually so, 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 um, narrowed down in terms of our colored history starting in Cape Town and, and ending in Cape Town. Uh, but, but there's also the Namakoland colors. There's also the colors from the Northern Cape and the colors Eastern Cape and Joburg and all of that. So there's so many stories that still yeah. haven't. And the colors in the Indian Ocean <laughs> Islands, the colors yes. in South America, the yeah. colors in North America. Yeah. Yeah, it's that Creole tay, and, 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 yeah. and there's always a liquor masala, mixed masala <laughs> yes. stuff that's happening. Yeah. There's beautiful, beautiful yeah. stories. Um, I want to know ultimately because I suggested that some gang members have serious 
second thoughts about mm. where they are mm. at. They have a conscience. They seek to escape it. Maybe, you know, the choices are not clear to them. And I don't want you to give too much away. Mm. But does Ethan escape? Um, I think so. I think Ethan finds a new passion. Ethan finds a new way out. Um, he's probably uh, trapped in terms of his psychology in that in in a place like that because you can't really escape yourself mm. mentally. But I think just the mere fact that he found a new hope yeah. in the spinning that's pretty much. Uh, I think that's the goal that he wanted to. Uh, you know, he wanted to achieve. And uh, once he got hold of that, that was the one thing that took him out of this gangster uh, world. And uh, maybe also the fact that Damien, you know, Damien uh, leaves, uh, it's, it's basically out of his world. Yeah. He's, Not giving away too He's much. owned, he's trapped. <laughs> yeah. and, it, and it's owned. It's literally a case of ownership when, you, when you're joining a gang. You're, you're owned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You buy your way out. You're going to buy your way out. It's only, yeah, you can't. Uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a tough life, life mm. out there. Just final words. Why, why should we be watching Spinners? I think uh, Spinners uh, has a young crowd. It's got an, uh, a mature crowd as well. And uh, there's a lot of uh, colored representation happening in this uh, play, in, in this uh, movie, the series. And uh, definitely the spinning culture, which is, uh, it has been going underground for uh, quite a few years now. It's only now that it's getting, uh, you know, um, limelight yeah. exposure. But it's been on for some time, and, and it's so erg, uh, erg, uh, yeah. clearling, you know, erg colored. <laughs> you know, that's why they must go watch it. <laughs> We've been pumping cars long before uh, anybody else in the world pumped cars, man. Uh, and, of course, this is just another manifestation of it.